Hi again everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use GraphPad Prism to make a scatter plot, as well as look at correlation and linear regression. The data set I have open is looking at birth weight and estrol level, which is a form of estrogen that is produced during pregnancy. The Excel data set is available on Moodle for BMS 1042 students. If you're watching this video from outside, you can see that there are 31 patients with different estrol levels and different baby birth weights. So I'll copy the estrol level and birth weight, and then I'll go to GraphPad. So now I'm on GraphPad, and the type of table and graph I want is an XY, and I'm going to be entering in data, and I am entering and plotting a single Y value for each point. So then I say create. And from here, I can paste in the data set and you can see that data from Excel has now been put into GraphPad. I always like giving the different data tables a name. This is especially important when you're doing lots of analysis. When you've got an X and a Y variable and you're wanting to do linear regression, the most important thing to do is to do a scatter plot first because this will graph the data and tell you whether the relationship is actually linear. So to do this, I go, to, I go down to the graphs and yes, I want to do an XY graph. I only want, want the points, so I say OK. Then I right click and resize the graph to fit the page so it's bigger. Each draw level is milligram per 24 hours and birth weight is in kilograms. And I also need to give this a good title. You can see that I've already done this graph before, so I don't have to do much typing. I'm also going to make all of the title and X and Y titles smaller. And birth weight should actually be starting at zero. So if I double click, and uncheck the automatically determine the range and interval, I can then set the minimum to be zero and say OK. Looking at this data plot, it looks reasonable to assume that the relationship between estrol levels and birth weight is roughly linear. So now we can continue. The second thing that we're going to do is to look at correlation. So I go back to the data table, I hit analyze, and I select correlation from underneath the X, Y analyses, and then I say okay. There aren't many options to choose from, and we only have one X and one Y variable. 
So computing R for X versus every Y data set is a reasonable thing to select. If you want to be more specific, you can say X versus column A birth weight. We're assuming that the data is normal, so we want to calculate the Pearson correlation coefficient. We want a two-sided p-value with 95% confidence, so I'll say OK. So this shows you that the R-value, the correlation coefficient, is 0 0.6173 with a 95% confidence interval. We'll cover the R squared value later. And the P value is 0 0.0002. So three zeros and then a two. So that means that it is significant. The null hypothesis of the correlation coefficient being zero is incorrect. The alternate hypothesis of the correlation coefficient not being zero is what is correct. You can also look at the XY data, which is the same as before, and you can look at the correlation, which again is the same as before. So we only need to look at the tabular results. Now, I want to do linear regression. So I go back to the original data table and I hit analyze. And then I go to linear regression. There are lots of options on this particular pop-up window. After we've done the analysis, we want to look at the residual plot to see how good the line of best fit is. So we tick that. We want the 95% confidence intervals to be calculated and we want the regression line to start and stop automatically. So now I say OK. There's lots more data that comes out from this analysis. There's the slope, that's the beta coefficient plus or minus the standard error. There's the R squared, which is the coefficient of determination. That says how much of the variation in Y, which is birth weight, is explained by the equation. There's also a test to see is the slope zero or not zero. And you can see that the p-value is much less than 0 0.05 and it's significant. So that means that the slope is not zero. There are 31 observations and the line of best fit is y equals 0 0.05957 times x plus 2.183. So what does that mean? That means that birth weight equals 0 0.05957 times x, which is estriol, plus 2.183. You can also look at the table of residuals, which is not particularly well labelled. It's actually in this column here titled birth weight. And the residuals graph is also there. So I'll change this birth weight to be residuals. And I'll change the east roll level to indicate that it's milligram per 24 hours. And 
we want to make the graph to fit the page and we want all of the titles to be a little bit smaller. Looking at this residual plot, it's random all over the place. There's no real indication of a pattern. So that means that the residuals are fine. So what is the residual? The residual is the observed value of birth weight minus the predicted value of birth weight. If you go to the tabular results, for each baby, you can use this equation to predict the birth weight. There's no way of showing this, how to do this in GraphPad. So I will go back to Excel after copying the formula. So now I'm back in Excel. And I've pasted in the equation to show what the line of best fit is. So the predicted birth weight is 0 0.05957 times the east roll level, which differs per person, plus 2.183. So I can put that in one cell and I can paste it all down. So now I've got the observed birth weight in column C and I've got the predicted birth weight in column D. And you can see that the predicted birth weight is a little bit different to the observed birth weight. So now I can manually calculate the residual for each point to be the observed minus the predicted. So you can see that some points like individual 16 and 17 are very close to the actual line whereas others like person 11 are further away. I'll go back to the graph to show you what I mean. One way of looking at the graph is to look how far away each of the dots are from the line of best fit. What the residual plot does though is it makes the line of best fit to be zero and show the scatter around that. So if I go to the residual plot you can see that some points are almost exactly on the line whereas there are others that are further away from the line. And what the line of best fit does is it minimises all of the lines of best fit so the residuals are as small as possible. You might wonder why I've only got one X or covariate in this particular model. That's because in GraphPad you can only do simple linear regression where you have one X and one Y. If you have multiple X's you need to use a more complicated statistical package. But at least by learning how to use GraphPad you have an idea of how to do simple linear regression.